Hi, this is Pat Dignan from Image Arts. Um, I'm going to talk in this video a little bit about how to change the color of things and the color space that you use uh, to do it in. Um, first of all, a lot of pictures are in CMYK because that's how it's going to be printed. Um, a lot of stock photos and things come in RGB, um, but I know that traditionally for years and years and years, so many scanners just scan directly into CMYK uh, that there's still a lot of people working in a CMYK uh, color flow or a workflow kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to show you a few things about uh, changing colors in the different color spaces and uh, how that can work. Um, originally, this picture of this woman, her sweater, her shirt is uh, black or dark gray. And uh, just imagine the client uh, wants it to be, or you want it to be, bright yellow. Um, well, in CMYK, you can do so much to it, but you just can't really get it bright yellow. Because it was so dark to start with, um, we've taken almost all of the cyan out of it, um, taken most of the magenta out of it, um, it has to be something in there for the um, for the shading and the uh, shadow areas, um, and most yellows have some amount of, of magenta in them, anyways. Um, the yellow we've increased significantly, um, and then pulled it out in the highlight areas to make it look like it's uh, catching a highlight. Um, but that the highlights do end just like right here, so. Um, we're not clipping them by that far. And in blacks, so we've lightened it up a lot. Um, and But we're trying to, to maintain just enough to, to keep the shadows. Unfortunately, in CMYK, because we've, we've moved the, the um, adjusted the, the curves so very far, we get a lot of banding or posterization of the, uh, of the uh, colors. I'll zoom in here. And, you can see it's it's pretty noisy, and we've we've got some funkiness going on here. The highlights are really blown out. It's 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 a really delicate balance to keep these highlights from going pure white um, or or nothing at all. And then we still also have some funky colors like these greens in in the sleeves, where uh, the original. Uh, shirt was not all exactly the same color, so when we put one curve on it all, it doesn't work um, on, on every little bit. The shadows are looking a little green uh, because we have to have some black in there, and unfortunately, when uh, in a CMYK printing situation, black and yellow make green because the black is not totally pure. It's really more like ultra super dark blue. So it... Um, it tends to make things green uh, when you when you print yellow and black together, since we had taken virtually all of the yellow out, so um, or uh, most of the cyan out. Um, so let's put that back down. And a good alternative is to try to change colors in uh, RGB. Now here we've been more successful in getting a bright yellow uh, than over here. Uh, but we still have problems with um, some of the, the light areas getting blown out. Here, if we look at the curves, you see that even though um, in, the, in the blue curve, we, even if we take this down, we, we still have, um, well, that does help a little bit, but we're still getting, we're still getting big contrast between light areas and mid-tone yellow areas and the ability to adjust those is somewhat difficult. The good thing is we're not getting the funkiness in the shadows. Um, it does go down to a believable yellow shadow instead of turning green in the shadow areas. Um, and that's a good thing. So that's this, uh, this version is in many ways much better than the CMYK version in that we're able to get to the bright yellow that we're looking for and have pretty believable highlights and shadows. Um, let's close or make that smaller. 
and then look at a third alternative. If things are really difficult, as far as changing colors, you can go to the uh, lab color mode, which stands for lightness A and B channels here. We've got a lightness channel, an A channel, and a B channel. The, the uh, A and B channels uh, look really strange, and they, um, the way that they work together is something that no one really uh, quite understands except for the people that make Photoshop. <laughs> so um, I just uh, know how to, how to mess with them. Don't quite understand exactly how they're working together there. But here, let's, uh, let's look at what happens here with this, uh, with this layer. What I've done is taken the, the lightness, which is essentially how bright the pixels are, or the value of them, and slid them up quite a bit so that our highlights are nice, um, are nice and light. 95, if you're looking up here at the L, that stands for, that's 95 or, or like a 5% dot. Um, and down here, they're in the mid 60s, 70%, so they're, they're getting darker. Um, in the shadow areas. The nice thing is, let's blow that up, the nice thing is is the lightness does not does not um, affect color at all. So so when we um, adjust adjust this we're not we're, uh, we're maintaining the color value whether it's in a highlight or a shadow. So then all we do is change the the location, the lightness or darkness of the a and B channels like this to change the color to yellow. And in the end, we're able to produce a color change that looks much more realistic um, than either one of the uh, CMYK or RGB uh, changes. And if we did want to have those, those blown out highlights like in the um, RGB version, uh, we can still do that in, in a lab color. Where we're still well within the range of its adjustability, where where the color we're looking for is completely out of the range of adjustability for CMYK, because the color we're looking for is outside the CMYK gamut. In RGB, um, we're getting right close to the edge, and it's getting very difficult to adjust the highlights and the shadows. But we're still running into some some posterization in the shadows here because we've adjusted the curves so very far. Um, but in lab color, we're still well within their ability to be adjusted. So uh, if we wanted to make it uh, have higher, brighter highlights, no problem. We can still go there. Once you have your picture, your color changed, uh, whether you did it in RGB or lab color, you can then flatten that. Um, you can go convert to profile, which is the best way to change from one uh, color space to another because you have a lot more control than going under image. Um, say we want to change this to to uh, RGB. Um, we would change it to RGB in here um, or we can just go straight to um, CMYK like that. Boom! Just like that. We Now we have a CMYK uh, version of this picture. Um, and it has colors in it that we weren't able to get to by doing the adjustment right in CMYK. Well, I hope this little tutorial helps you out with changing colors and understanding what color space to be in when doing it. Um, feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions. It's pdignan at imageartsonline.com. Thanks.